Hi there guys, it's Wade McMaster here from creatorimpact.com. Today's video, I'm gonna show you just very simply how you can transform objects in Photoshop. I'm um, just giving you an introduction to basically what's possible if you want to play around with Photoshop and well, essentially transform objects or move things around, uh, changing their shape. So the way it works is you actually got a series of options pretty much all in the one spot. If you head under, if you've got a file open, I've got a file here with a few different layers I'm gonna go through. If you've got a file open here, you've got, if I come down, a series of options in here. So pretty much everything from transform up to content aware scale. These are areas you can use to transform your, uh, your image. I'm actually gonna start at the bottom uh, because as we go up, these get a little bit more interesting. I'm starting off a transform here. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is that I have this layer selected uh, with this background. If I go to edit and transform, now you notice some of these actually have shortcut keys with them as well, but uh, just if you ever want to figure out what they are, all you need to do is go to your menu and, and see what they are because they're listed just next to the actual tool. First of all, basic stuff, flip vertical. If I click flip vertical, it's going to turn the image upside down. Then if I hit transform, flip horizontal, then it's going to flip it horizontally. So from this side to that side. So that's a pretty basic... Um, feature and of course you've got the other stuff like rotate 180 so it rotates it around 180 degrees uh, or I can go rotate clockwise or rotate it 90 degrees clockwise so that is moving the top half the top half right and of course I go to transform and rotate counterclockwise it'll rotate it back the other way so that's simple flipping and rotating um, pretty straightforward it's just there under edit and transform but uh, what actually happens now is uh, we've got a few more options here. If I just open up uh, this person right here, if I click, now one thing you can do also, if I right click, I can convert to smart object. I can go to edit, transform, I can scale. So when I click scale, it's gonna zoom out a little bit. I get these handles here and I can scale this. Now, if you have this link checked, it will scale in proportion. I can hold down shift if I'm using PC and change the proportion a bit. Or if I just untick this, it will do that without me having to hold shift. And when I'm done, I just click this tick button or enter and I've scaled my object. Now, once again, that's pretty straightforward. These are all very straightforward features, these ones in here. Go okay, transform, obviously rotate. If I click rotate, I can sit out here and rotate this. Okay, I hit control Z to undo that. If I hold down shift, I get this sort of sort of uh, like a sharper angle so I can get things exactly 90 degrees, 75 degrees, 60 degrees, if you can see the little degrees symbol next to my cursor, and I can rotate things to where I want. So that's pretty handy. Once again, transform skew. Things are a little different here. With skew, I can move one line across or around um, like this. It doesn't go up and down, it simply goes left to right, or if I choose another side here, it simply goes up and down. Or I can do both and get like a really cool skewed effect that way. Once again, if I hit, I'm happy with that, I hit enter, and the image has been skewed. Um, so that's basically what skew does. I'm just gonna hit Control Z. Uh, distort is a little bit more free where you're actually just grabbing corners, moving them to where you want and you're getting some basic distortion, moving things where you want. If you hold down shift, it does have some um, limitations as to where it'll allow you to go if you want to sort of really tighten things up. So distort allows you to pretty much alter your image in a number of ways. Perspective, once again now, perspective allows you to kind of skew or you can move one corner in, it'll create a perspective that way or I can create a perspective this way. The idea is it's basically like taking a flat surface and sort of putting it into a bit of a perspective so you can um, have something, if you've got a square, you can have it in there, it looks like it's heading towards, you know, your horizon line of your image or anything like that. I hit enter and it saves my perspective. So though those are the basics under the transform menu, except for warp. Now warp is a little bit different again. If I click, click on warp, I can basically move these little handles and get kind of curved transformations. I can basically, I've got all the other options here to flip between. If I right click, 
but I can essentially grab areas and warp this into whatever shape I want to get a pretty nifty effect. So warp is pretty handy um, if getting, you want something a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word for it, a little bit more custom. And of course you can split these, I can split it vertically down here. And that allows me to move this part of the object, that's by clicking up here. So that way if I wanna move a particular section within this, I can curve that in such a manner as well. And then I can also do the same horizontally to do that. And then you actually get a pretty cool little twirl effect if you wanna play with it that way. But uh, that essentially is what allows you to really warp an image. It's gonna control Z back. Then you can do one without the other. So if I wanna split uh, horizontally, I can do something like this get something a little bit funny looking. But that's essentially how warp works. It allows you to grab certain handles of your image, move it around, and you can play with those handles. If I go back, I can move these around by clicking on them. Well, you see we've got these little handles here. They are what allow you to do your curves. Um, so it's pretty it's pretty handy. If you want a straight line, you pretty much just, you can just pretty much line these up like that and get a relatively straight line. Uh, you can just simply curve get the look you're after there. So warp, pretty powerful tool. Uh, but what we're about to go into is actually, uh, we're getting into the really interesting stuff. But before we do that, there's free transform. Now free transform is a lot, it's kind of like a, an amalgamation of a lot of the different um, tools. If I can scale things if I want to, but if I sit just on the outside, I can also rotate. So it's pretty cool in that sense, but when I hold down control, you'll see my mouse pointer turn from an arrow into a white pointer. I can move this around like a skew, except uh, I can actually move it up and down as well. So I can do that. I can even click on corner points and get a bit of a perspective, um, not perspective, a uh, distort tool going. And then of course, if you want perspective, you get a grab the other side. But that's just with me holding control. It's actually worth having a play with this. But once you hold down control, you can actually change the behavior of the nodes on this. Rotate, once again, you can hold shift to get sharper angles. So free transform gives you more options of, more of the basic options such as scale, rotate, distort, um, that sort of thing. So that way when you're really confident, you can just hit control T, or I think it's command T on Mac, and do a free transform to get the look you're after. So that is free transform. But now we're starting to get to some more interesting things. One thing I'm gonna show you is the content aware scale. If I hit, if I get my selection tool and select this guy, I get a content aware scale. Whoops, I need to stop this from being a smart object. So I'm gonna rasterize this layer. Now if I, uh, what it does is it sort of identifies certain areas of the image which would not need to be scaled. And so that way, when you scale them, it kind of keeps them at the same size. So you can see his shoes, his head are remaining the same size. So he's actually, he looks like he's a bit shorter there than he was before. So if I can control Z, I go between the two. You can see his head stays the same size, but his body actually shrinks. So you, get, uh, you can get a pretty cool uh, effect when you play around with that. Um, you can hit the selection tool to select a bit more tightly. And you can actually have a lot of fun seeing what results you get. So I've sort of gone to one side here. He's stayed relatively central to the layer. His legs have gotten really thin. His shoes have stayed pretty, uh, pretty much in place. I can make him wider. Now it's not perfect. You do get some funny little uh, things happening, but you sort of get the idea. It could be something, once again, having a play with it and seeing what results you get. At the end of the day, his head has remained pretty constant most of this time, his chin shrunk a little bit there, but um, you get some pretty interesting results with the content aware scale. All right, and the next one is, we're going to actually go down to puppet warp. Now this one's a little bit more interesting. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually going to cut this guy out. I've got him selected this layer. I hit select, subject, and I'm actually just going to mask, so I have him cut out completely, and then I'm gonna right click 
and apply that mask uh, just for the sake of the video. And I'm gonna go to Edit and Puppet Warp. And you can see here, we've got this grid and it looks a little bit confusing, but you can see by clicking on it, I've created a, a point. If I go and create these points on his body, I've created several points on his body that I can use. Now, what I actually wanna do now is I can move these points around. So if I want to actually get his leg bent out here, I can actually create all sorts of weird and sort of wonderful shapes. So if I want to actually have his shoulder over here, his head over here, maybe I want his head off to one side like this, I can actually sort of sway him around and get some pretty gnarly looking little effects there. I've actually used this in the past, not quite to this uh, degree of um, manipulation, but it does allow you to, uh, it is good if you want to move like a basic arm or leg around, if you've got a leg, so if I actually go back, let's escape that, okay, edit, puppet warp. If I just simply want to move his leg, I can pop hip, knee and foot. I can move his foot in a bit closer. If I want to do the same over here, maybe he's kind of floating. I can create and I can adjust by adding other points in and just get this nice sort of look where he's kind of like, well, almost like he's tap dancing. And I've just hit enter there to apply that. But obviously as before, you can hit tick up here. But you do get some pretty nifty effects. I'm gonna hit control T and just rotate him into place. So you can actually use that to move limbs around and alter certain areas of the image that you want to very particularly target and uh, almost like create it's kind of like if you've ever done 3D before, um, which if you have, you're probably more familiar with this, um, you can create certain joins and uh, like a biped where you can basically create points you wanna move around. So that's a pretty cool feature of Photoshop is the puppet warp, something worth playing with, especially if you're gonna have fun with the image. Now the final one, I'm gonna open up here. I'm actually going to just very quickly cut out this box. It's not gonna be perfect but it's gonna do the job. Gonna mask, whoops, click the right way. I'm gonna mask. I'm gonna cut it out just a little bit better for the sake of demonstration. All right, got a little bit of a mess here, but that's okay. I'm gonna apply that mask. And we're gonna do something called Perspective Warp. So I'm gonna go up here to Edit and go to Perspective Warp. Now, the way it works is you'll get Perspective Warp and you'll start drawing. So I draw this square here. Now what I'm actually doing is I'm actually telling Photoshop what the perspective of the object is. And it's very simple with a box, but you can do this with a building. If you've got something that's generally square shaped, even if it has sort of indents and things like that, um, could be a building, could be a statue that's uh, got like corners. You can just draw, put it into a bit of a box shape. And when I start drawing, you'll see here, if I get close, it kind of, sometimes it snaps, sometimes it doesn't. That snaps into place there. I draw another one. As you can see, that is snapped into place. And I can join these up. And now I have this box perspective. Because at the moment I have up here layout selected, which is selected by default. Once I go to warp here, it gives me some instructions, I can move the perspective of the box around. I can move this up here and it'll actually use the the information in the image to warp that. Uh, and once I'm happy, I click tick and you'll see we now have this box perspective here. I can move this around. If I want to, I'll copy that, undo. So you can see we have the original box on the left and the perspective altered on the right. So you can see how cool and easy it is to change the perspective of certain things using the perspective warp tool. Now this uh, can be done, it doesn't have to be a box shape. Now one good example of this is a car. If I paste this car in here and cut it out, which hopefully this goes nice and quick. All right, I'm going to add a little to that selection just quickly. I mask, 
I apply the mask. So this is my car. Uh, I would spend more time cutting out the wheels, uh, you know, if you were going to do this properly. But let's just, well, let's just do that very quickly. And we're going to apply our perspective warp. So I'm going to go edit perspective warp, and I'm going to draw a panel down here. Try and match the side of the car. So I'm actually going to bring this back. It's not perfect, but you sort of get the idea. I draw another one along the front. Once again, I just try and bring that across. And we don't really have, we can't really see too much of the top, but I'm going to draw one here for the video anyway. So we go here. We go there. Try and line that up with where, say, the back wheel would be. And we've got our car layout done. So I click on warp, and I'm gonna basically try and bring the car around a little bit more to the front. Click tick. Obviously, a little bit of work done, but you sort of get the idea, it's not too bad. It's as simple now, if I want to sort of shorten that, I can just select it, hit Control T, and just sort of bring it back in place. But you can see how if I copy this again, once again, it's very roughly cut out to demonstrate. We've now actually rotated the car across. And you can make some basic edits to it afterwards. Probably the top wasn't necessary on this, but you get the idea. So that is the perspective warp. And those are your, your basic, uh, those are the Photoshop warps uh, and transforms that you have included with Photoshop. So. Um, Hopefully that has shed some light on those and what's possible if you take the time to really learn these tools. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please consider giving a like so it helps support the channel and uh, allows me to create more free content like this for you guys. If you want to see more of that uh, kind of information, please subscribe. And of course, any questions or ideas you'd like me to do a video on, leave a comment below and uh, we can go from there. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.